still working on that one. That's Sylvia. Um, it's getting really close. I'm hoping to have. I'm hoping to put a lesson together on that. And um, it's kind of a. It's a. It's an interesting. Well, it's a story that's happened to me a few times in my life. Like about five years ago, maybe more, six or seven years ago, I had kind of an arrangement of it that was in the original key, uh, which was F, starting on an F chord. And it was just impossible because it was like nothing but bar chords. And then I, so I forgot about it and stuff. And then a, a couple of months ago, can probably go back and check the records as to when this happened. A couple of months ago, stumbled onto the, the you know, Jan Ackerman running through just a little bit of it. And in D. And it's like, it opened up the doors. It's kind of like a couple of years ago, going back to revisit. It's amazing that, that sometimes things will disappear for years and, or be long and forgotten, and then it's, they, they come back to haunt you. Um, happened with Bethina. Uh, kind of found new inspiration. Let's see if I can do it. No. Ah, nail problem. Oh my gosh. I don't know if I should stop. Oh well, I'm gonna try to get through the rest of this news with a snag on the nail. I mean, we'll see what happens. Maybe I'll have to just strum for the rest of it. So anyhow, um, I've been having a lot of fun playing Sylvia, except it's one of those that, like, you may have, saw, may have seen a uh, fly on the wall that we did recently with Sandy a couple of, I'm not sure how long ago now. Um, but she was having repetitive stress injuries from playing the same thing too much. I think I'm getting that from Sylvia. lessons. Anyway, that's all I gotta do, play that song, except he did, he went into the lead on it. I'm really having a lot of fun looking at Max's lessons. I hope you guys are too. That was, of course, Pat Benatar. That was a lesson that we came out with this week. This week, what is going on? It's the end of April. It's um, 27th, I guess. Yeah. And um, that, ooh, I'd have to check the date for sure, but that means we're right around our ninth anniversary of TG. We, we had that first live broadcast, end of April, 2009. Could have even been the 27th. No. Oh, I don't remember what day of the week it was, because it was a weekend. It was a Saturday. Anyway, I think. Maybe Sunday. Anyhow, we got it. We have all that documented. It's this kind of thing you, you don't have to remember because you can look it up. It's like nowadays why you don't have to know your license plate number. You know, when I was a kid, I knew the license plate number to every car my mom had. And um, I still do. I can't get rid of it. I mean, I have no idea what mine is now. But back then, when you're a kid, you don't know what you have to remember and what you don't. I still remember the phone numbers from the houses I had when I, the places we lived. And, uh, 356-1022. That was a long, that was a number we had for many years till we had to change it because of prank phone calls. But it will never leave my, I can't get rid of it. Anyway, um, uh, what, was I, what was I talking about? Where was I? I was talking about Pat Benatar. TG. You know, uh, the, uh, I can't believe we've been doing this for nine years because, uh, you know, when Matt first suggested, let's, let's do a video site and let's make some, do some video lessons. I'm thinking, you know what? Okay. Don't think it's going to work. Well, it's really turned out to be a lot of fun and a, and a really a great run and a great, not run, what am I thinking? It's, it's just been a fun path to be, to be on. Uh, and I, I, you probably heard me, many of you have heard me tell a little bit of this story before. But when we first got started, I had no uh, fantasy that it would turn into like as big a job as it has. Or, but it was just, I was just thinking it's going to be really cool to put down on dot video, like I've got videotapes of video of my kids from the day they were born so that they could ever, they could watch if they want someday. But anyway, to have video uh, documentation of, of what I've been doing for my whole life has been, it was pretty cool. So, and now we're up over a thousand songs. And when we opened in, in, in April of 2009, we had 50, five, oh, that was over a thousand. And a lot of this thanks to my, uh, my great colleagues, Max and Vanessa. Appreciate them putting up lessons every week. Vanessa this week did uh, Bonnie Tyler. That was kind of a cool one. Some unusual key changes in there. So, hope you guys take, took a look at that one. And um, what else did I... Oh, and then... Well, I'll 
I'll get back to that maybe later. Because while I'm talking about the TG anniversary, I do want to bring up a story that I maybe have never told before. But when my son Corey, who is now almost 30, was in third grade, his his teacher, Betty Hartman, bless her soul, she was, she's, she's just was great. And uh, if she's out there watching, we're still thinking about you. Mrs. Hartman um, had the foresight. So this would have been about 20 years ago, I guess. Probably about 10 years old in fourth grade, third or fourth. Yeah, nine or 10. And... Um, it, she said that, you know, there's a really good chance that whatever Corey is doing for a living, for a job, uh, has not been invented yet. Thinking, well, okay, that means he's probably not going to be a teacher. My youngest is going to be a teacher. But um, my middle one is working on being a chiropractor. But she was right about Corey, that he's doing something, he's doing internet marketing. Of course, that didn't exist 20 years ago. And the even more pertinent thing about her comment is, what I'm doing now didn't exist 20 years ago. Being able to spread spread the word of music all around the world without leaving the friendly confines of, of TG Central here. So uh, anyway, it's been it's been really fun. And uh, okay, okay, that's it for the for the Betty Hartman story. But she was a, a prophetess of some sort. What else did we have this week? Um, uh, Kevin working on on the road again. and some things like that, but uh, later on, I don't think I put this part in there. We transposed it because it was just a little too high for him to sing, so I'll, I'll have to dig through the tapes, and if, uh, if you guys want to see that part, I'll put it up. I do have a lot of fly on the walls, flies on the wall, brothers-in-laws uh, floating around that uh, I'll try to bring out one of those a week. It doesn't always happen, but I, I hope people are getting something out of them. Um, anyway, what else did we have? Oh, and then uh, finally got around to... Lightfoot's tune, beautiful. Did hear from Ron Blue yesterday, who uh, had just seen Gordon play here in Northern California, and was a little disappointed. You know, Gordon is uh, he doesn't he doesn't quite have the pipes. I mean, or the uh, he's had some tough health issues, and it's still it's actually kind of amazing that he's even out playing and singing. So great to hear the songs, but. Uh, and especially before he's not going to be with us, so they probably won't be with us much longer, but glad he's, glad he's getting around. I did see him once at the Opera House in San Francisco. Um, around the time of Endless Wire, 
probably that's mid 80s I bet no I bet it's it's early 80s maybe and maybe even 79 somewhere around then that's that's when my friend Fred and I were spending a lot of time listening to and playing Gordon Lightfoot tunes um, <laughs> I'm going to put that album on this afternoon. Endless Wire had a great version of The Circle is Small to another one. start on A but it really is in it's an unusual song it starts on chord four of whatever key it's in and the melody starts on note six of the chord so you got your playing an eight we're in the key of E finally when it gets to the the chorus it'd be something like E the G sharp in the bass A B but then the melody of the of the verse starts on chord four and starts on note six of chord four. It's an F sharp. Okay, sorry. Sorry to wander off into into Gordon Lightfoot days, but um, great songwriter. Um, I had one more thing I was going to talk about. Oh, I had a lesson yesterday with with my my friend Peter, and we got into talking about a little geography stuff. So I want to bring in a, a, a cool tip of things that... Wait, is there anything else I need to talk about? No, I think the, the things on my list are a very short list today. Um, are being able to recognize intervals on the guitar can be a really useful thing. You know, when you look at the at the, the matrix of the guitar, there's six strings, there's 152 frets or whatever, and it just seems like way too big to try to um, know where every note is. But if you do a couple of things, Learn the notes on the sixth string. Learn to recognize, know where the natural notes are. The white keys, where E, F, G, A, B, C, D, and E are. Um, and have reference points. Know that the fifth fret is A. Use that, don't ever count. If you're looking for a C on the E string, you should know, oh, I've got A right there, That's I'm gonna go from there. You don't have to remember that C was at the eighth fret. As long as you know A is at the fifth fret, you should be able to get your way to C pretty soon. So learn the notes on the sixth string. Then learn the notes on the fifth string. Then don't learn any more, but start with the sixth. And then be sure you recognize the notes on the fourth string and their relationship to notes on the sixth string, because you've got to go 12 frets for an octave. Right? Go six frets for half an octave. We call that a tritone. Pretty ugly, huh? Great tune, though. Um, hard to believe somebody built a whole song out of, out of an E, an E, and a B flat. Well, I'm okay. I'm not going to sing that one. Um, but, so, knowing that you have to go 12 frets in an octave, and knowing that the strings are tuned 5 frets apart, think about that, 
come to the fifth fret of the E string and you've got the note on the A string. So from the distance of E to A, a fourth E, F sharp, G sharp, A, is five frets. Well, from A to D is another five frets. That's ten frets. That's two frets short of an octave, that would be twelve. So the note on the D string that would be an octave above the note on the E string is going to be two frets higher than the same fret. So, open sixth string and second fret of the fourth string are an octave. All the way up the neck. So, if you're looking for a note on the D string, if you're looking for a B flat, and you know that, oh, let's see, I know A is on the sixth string, at the fifth fret, B flat would be at the sixth fret, that means the B flat on the D string is the eighth fret. There's the same thing in octaves. Now what I did the first time was I played two E's on the sixth and second, sixth and fourth strings, then went to the seventh fret of the fifth string, where my next E is. By the way, that E that's an octave would be, it'd be five frets to the fifth string, and if I go seven more frets up that string, I'm at an octave again. The five for the string change and the seven to come up there. Still with me? I hope so. I'm sure some of you are. Um, now the notes on the, an octave from the fifth string would be the same thing. Two strings, which is ten frets, and two frets. So that's what I did. I played an octave here, open and second fret, and then I played an octave here at the seventh fret of the fifth string, of the A string, and the ninth fret, and then I played an octave B flat and the ninth fret of the G string, and then two B flats at the sixth and eighth frets. So that's the cool relationship. If you know the sixth and fifth strings and you can picture octaves, you know the fourth and third strings. We can extend that, but I'm going to save that for later because as soon as the second string gets involved, which it will on the next when we get to the fourth string, it's a fret short. Oh, it's so simple. It's just not going to, it's not going to be this. It's going to have to be this because it's only tuned at four frets. So we need a three fret spread for this pair of strings, the fourth and second, and the same for the third and first. Okay, all right. I didn't mean to necessarily get so wrapped up, and that wasn't even the story that I was talking about with Peter yesterday. It was more finding thirds and sevenths. So if I think about it, I, I'll try to remember to talk about that next week. All right, I'm gonna go back to cracks. Oh, I haven't played this in a long time. Oh, it's so rusty. The nail's working better, though. temporarily. Okay, uh, that's everything I wanted to go through today. I hope everybody has a good week and uh, we're heading into May. May Day coming up Tuesday, I think. We come up with a good spring song. Maybe I should learn that one by Griffin from their album Treason. I think I want to put that up as a little listening post. Okay, we'll see if that, see if I remember to do that. That is it for the end of April.